We're so pleased to be here today, and we have a special guest. Could you introduce us? Right, this is Stan, which is one of the last dinosaurs. This is a T-Rex, and this was one of the last dinosaurs to go extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. And what this is is a replica of a complete skeleton that was found in South Dakota. And it's been called Stan because the person who found it was named Stan. But the fact of the matter is we don't know if this was a male or a female dinosaur. So even though we nickname it Stan uh, and we often think of it as him, it could very well have been her. And what's interesting about this T-Rex is not only its size, it's about 42 feet long, it's one of the biggest T-Rexes ever found, but it has a whole lot of injuries. There are broken bones, healed bones, there are puncture marks from two teeth and bite marks on the left side of the animal, the side that we're standing here looking at. And so what we did is when we mounted this replica here in the atrium of the museum so that all the visitors who first come will see this last of the dinosaurs. So we are here actually today to learn more about the Triassic period. So how does Stan fit in with the Triassic period? What period is he from? Well, the Triassic period was the beginning of dinosaurs. And then after the Triassic comes the Jurassic, which everybody's heard of. And then after the Jurassic comes the Cretaceous. And that's the last period during which dinosaurs lived. And this is when Stan lived. He lived near the end of the Cretaceous period. Okay, great. So now we're going to have a closer look at the Triassic. So let's go up there. So we are here at the Triassic exhibit. And this is called Dawn of Dinosaurs. So help us understand what New Mexico has to do with the Triassic period. Well, the Triassic period was 200 to 251 million years ago. And at that time, all the continents were conglomerated into one supercontinent. And New Mexico was near the western shoreline of that supercontinent. And there were rivers flowing across the state. And on these, along these rivers, along their floodplains and in the forests, there lived some of the earliest dinosaurs that are known to science. So New Mexico has a lot to do with the origin of dinosaurs because this fossil record of early dinosaurs has taught us a lot about what the early dinosaurs were like and where they may have come from. So New Mexico is a, a rich area for this, correct? Right, New Mexico has a fossil record of, of Triassic fossils that's world famous, particularly for its dinosaurs. So Dr. Lucas, tell us what this is. This is a block of rock that contains about 20 skeletons of early, of early dinosaurs, of the late Triassic dinosaur called Coelophysis, which also happens to be New Mexico state fossil. And it was collected at Ghost Ranch in northern New Mexico, which is one of the biggest Triassic dinosaur localities in the world. So this is the actual fossil, this is not a cast? These are real fossils, these are real bones here, and you can see they've been prepared, they've been cleaned off and pedestaled, and you can see the animals as they were preserved in the real rock. Now, is, it looks like a bird to me. Is this the Coelophysis? Right, this is the Coelophysis, and you're right to say that it's bird-like. These meat-eating dinosaurs are thought to have been the ancestors of birds, and even in early meat-eating dinosaurs like this one, we see many bird-like features, particularly in the shape of the skull, the large eyes, the long neck, and if you could see the hands laid out, these animals were very active, agile runners, predators. They were not able to fly, as far as we can tell, but they were definitely on the way to becoming birds. So this is what you call a phytosaur? Right, a phytosaur or phytosaurs were large crocodile-like reptiles of the late Triassic, and they reached lengths of more than 30 feet. And they were really the top predators. They were the most ferocious land-living predators of the time. And so what we have here is a replica of an entire phytosaur skeleton, and it's shown attacking a large plant-eating reptile called Placerius, which was a big cow-like animal. And the reconstruction, the idea here is that this is very much like a crocodile coming out of the water to attack attack an antelope or a zebra in what's now Africa. So the, these were the big predators of the Triassic. So these animals were inhabitants of New Mexico? Yeah, there are many, there are many fossils of phytosaurs found in New Mexico, and that, that means complete skulls, skeletons, etc. And we have this bone bed we're digging on in northern New Mexico. So these are some actual skeleton or skulls from that particular bone bed? 
Right, these are real fossil skulls that were collected in northern New Mexico at the bone bed near Ghost Ranch. And they were excavated and then prepared and cleaned and put together for the mount here in the exhibition. And the teeth are, are in the skull, right? Well, you know, it, it turns out a lot of the teeth fall out of the skull. And so when the restoration was done, you can tell the real teeth are dark like the bone. The uh, replicas that we put in are light green or pale. So we, we, we don't try to fool a visitor. We want everyone to know what's real and it's not real. So we are now in what building? We're now in the museum's annex, the research annex, where we keep the fossil collections, we have the preparation lab, and we do all the research and study on the fossils. So does the public ever get to see this area? The public can come in here, but only by special arrangements. So this is really behind the scenes in the museum. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing it. So you're a volunteer here at the museum? Yes, ma'am. And what exactly are you doing? Uh, prepping these fossils, pulling them out of the matrix, uh, using the various tools you see laying around here. To I see you have a little a little off. brush here. Can you show us what you're doing with that little brush? Oh, the or? brush is just to, oh. to sweep up the, the pieces of matrix. Uh, you have to be very careful because not only large pieces exist in here, but also very small pieces like various teeth and small pieces of bone that you have to save. So you have to watch what you're doing, be careful and not throw anything away. But to be sure we don't miss anything, we save all of the pieces and also vacuum them up and save them and then screen wash them to be sure we get all of the, all of the fossils. So this is very time consuming. Yeah, I've been working on this about six months and I'm about half done. So how many hours a week do you come in here? 20 to 25. So it's something you really enjoy? Oh yeah, yeah. It, uh, something to do. Uh, give back a little and it's certainly very enjoyable. So do you have training in this area or do they train you? No, they have a training program they give us for about, uh, oh, a couple of months. They teach us how to use all the various tools, how to, how to work with the various glues and uh, putties we use, and then they sign us something and turn us loose. So you're not a retired paleontologist, right? No, I'm a retired uh, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what room is this? This is the fossil collection of the state of New Mexico. So can we walk around and look at some of these things? Sure. And, and let's just walk because there are so many. There's about 60,000 catalog fossils in this room. Look at the exhibit hall. And All exhibit halls should have what we call a big idea, one single idea that drives the whole exhibit. And in our Triassic Hall, the idea is that it's what I call the basic lesson of biodiversity. It's that at any time in the history of life, you can classify any organism into one of three groups. It's either something that's just evolved, something that's going extinct, or something that's just going its merry way. And so we do that with the Triassic animals. We look at the Triassic, it's a time when there were these big amphibians and they were pretty much going extinct. They were on their way out, so that's one category. It's also a time, the Triassic, when there were dinosaurs, there were mammals, there were pterodactyls. These are things that first evolved. And then we also look at animals like lungfish and plants like conifers. These were around in the Triassic. They had been around for many millions of years. They continued, so they were just passing through. And you can make the comparison to today. You can say, okay, how do I categorize organisms today? Well, I can look at mammoths, woolly mammoths, and say, this is a group of organisms that's just gone extinct. I can look at the human species and say, this is a group of organisms that has just first evolved. And I can look at things like, say, cockroaches. And these are animals that have been around for hundreds of millions of years. And I would bet you they'll be around hundreds of millions of years from now.